Let's say we had the autonomous differential equation dx dt equals f of x for some function f with the initial condition x at time t naught is some number x naught. Here t naught could be zero if we wanted the initial time to be zero, but it could be another time. Maybe we're starting at time 17, then t naught would be 17. Here we'll show how to understand the behavior of this differential equation using a graphical approach. It turns out we can determine the essential behavior of the solution, x of t, without doing any analytic calculations. In fact, we can figure out this behavior just from the graph of the function f of x. From this graph, we can determine what x of t will do from any initial condition x naught. How can we do this? Well, the derivative dx dt is the rate of change of x. If dx dt is large and positive, then we know x is increasing at a fast rate. If it's negative, this means x of t is decreasing. And if it's zero, this means x has zero velocity. How can we graphically determine whether dx dt is large, positive, or negative, or zero? Well, dx dt is just f of x. We can look at the graph of f of x and just look up the velocity of x. So given a value of the state variable x, we can look up f of x. Plug in that value into the function f, and just by looking at the graph, we can see if f is large and positive, then we know that x should be rapidly increasing at that point. On the other hand, if f is negative at that point, then we know x should be decreasing. So for example, if we find that f of x of t is positive, then we know x of t is increasing. So we know that for later time, x of t should move to a larger value. And we can continue this process looking at what happens to x of t as t continues to get larger. As it turns out, this ends up being a fairly simple process. Let's demonstrate this within an example. Let's look at the differential equation dx dt equals x squared minus 4. We can determine the dynamics of the solution x of t for any initial condition simply by looking at the graph of f of x equals x squared minus 4. By looking at the graph of f, we can immediately make some observations. First of all, f of x is negative in the interval from negative 2 to 2. So for x in the interval negative 2 to 2, the rate of change dx dt must be negative, which implies that x of t is decreasing. In fact, if x of t happened to be zero, the speed of this negative change would be greatest because, at least if I drew the figure right, the minimum of the function would occur at x equals zero. Now it's important that on this graph, I'm plotting x on the horizontal axis. So if I start off with x equals zero, I'm over here, and I can read off that my velocity should be negative. This means that as time increases, x should decrease. So I should move this direction. If at some other time, x were over here at, let's say, negative one and a half, I can again read off my velocity and see that the velocity should be negative, but the velocity is much lower here than it was when x was zero or if x happened to be 
Again, the velocity is negative, since f of x is negative when x is 1.5. So x should be decreasing. I should be moving in this direction. But I'm moving more slowly here than I was when x was 0. As long as I start anywhere from negative 2 to 2, I know that x is decreasing, because f is negative. So if I start over here, at let's say 1.5, with time I'll move to the left, get to smaller and smaller values of x. Eventually x will move down to 0, which means it will be moving as fast as possible, but it's still becoming more negative. It gets down to negative a half, all the way to negative 1 eventually. But I still have to keep moving to the left because f is negative. As I get closer and closer to negative 2, my velocity slows down because f is still negative, but it gets pretty small. Now if I were to reach x equals negative 2, what's my velocity? Well, f of negative 2 is 0. Which means that if x of t were equal to negative 2, the velocity would be 0. So if x starts in the interval negative 2 to 2, it's going to continue to decrease and get closer and closer to negative 2. And as it gets closer and closer to negative 2, its velocity gets closer and closer to 0. And in fact, it can never cross negative 2 because the velocity is 0 there. So what must happen to x of t as t gets large? it must get closer and closer to negative 2. So what we've concluded is that if x of t starts in the interval negative 2 to 2, it must get closer to negative 2 as t gets large. We can illustrate this result with the plot of x versus t. Notice that in the second plot, I'm using the opposite convention as in the first on the right. Here, x is plotted on the vertical axis. So this point 1 corresponds to the point over here when x is 1. Here's x equal 2, negative 1, and negative 2. And our special point, x equals negative 2, where we're heading, corresponds to x equals negative 2 here which I'm going to draw as a line to show for all time we care about that point. So let's imagine we started with the initial condition x of 0 equals 1.5. So when time is 0, I should start at 1.5 over here. And by looking up 1.5 on the graph, we see that f is negative, so x must decrease. So as time increases, as I move to the right on the second graph at the left, x should go down as I'm moving to the left over here. In fact, as x goes down, f gets more and more negative. So we should speed up. This slope should actually get larger and larger as x gets closer to 0, where the maximum slope occurs. But then, once we cross 0 and get to negative numbers, dx dt is still negative, f is still negative, but now x slows down because f isn't quite so negative. And as we get closer and closer to negative 2, we slow down because f approaches 0. Now we're down over here. We have a small value of f. And as time increases, we get closer and closer to the special value of x equals negative 2. So this green curve is a plot of x of t for the initial condition x of 0 equals 1.5. Now what would happen if we chose the initial condition x of 0 equals negative 3? Well that means we should start off here at negative 3 where f is large and positive. Let's extend our graph at the left to include negative 3. If I plot the solution for x of 0 equals negative 3 in orange, I start over here at negative 3, 
over here. And I need to increase quickly because f is very large at negative 3. So on the plot to the right, I'm moving to the right. And on the plot over here at the left, I'm moving upward fast. But again, as I approach negative 2, I slow down. And I get closer and closer to negative 2 as time increases. So just by looking at the graph of f of x, I can see what the behavior of the function should be for an initial condition, negative 3. If x of 0 is negative 3, I should increase to negative 2, but never quite get to negative 2. One more case. What would happen if I chose the initial condition x of 0 equals 2.1? We'll plot this in cyan. So if I start over here at 2.1, we can see that f of 2.1 is positive. So on the graph at the left, if I start at 2.1, I need to start moving upward with time. But I move upward slowly because f is pretty small. And I move to the right over here on the graph at the right. But as x gets to larger values, f of x gets larger. So my speed increases. And x starts to increase faster and faster. And in fact, what happens is that x blows up as time increases. The value x equals 2 is another special point because there f is 0. The velocity is 0, and so if I started at x equals 2, x doesn't change. And I have a constant solution. So if my initial condition is 2, x of t will be 2 for all time. The same thing was true for negative 2, and the purple line that we drew at first is actually a solution for the initial condition x of 0 equals negative 2. These special solutions where x doesn't change are called equilibria and they can immediately be recognized from the graph of f because they're the points where f is 0. For our example differential equation dx dt equals x squared minus 4 just by looking at the graph of f we've discovered that if the initial conditions are between negative 2 and 2 the solution will decay toward negative 2. If the initial condition is above 2, the solution will increase and blow up. But if the initial condition is below negative 2, the function will increase and approach negative 2. So this is how we use the graph of the function to determine the behavior of the dynamical system or differential equation.